Welcome to the podcast where together, every Monday, we explore hospitality in its very broader sense. From culture and cooking, cocktails and coffee, nutrition and farming, politics and animal welfare, organic and sustainability, family and business, entrepreneurship, and much, much more. Come and learn with me, Mark Cribb, about where our food and our drink comes from, and the businesses, and more importantly, the human beings that thrive on where we decide to spend our time and our money. Sign up to our weekly newsletter at humansofhospitality.co.uk and hit subscribe on your podcast player of choice. I love the challenges of operating hotels. I even have a little one myself. Well, in fact, even if I don't necessarily love them, because it's really, really hard, I do at least find them utterly fascinating. And we've not been to a hotel for a while, but I so enjoyed chatting to Gareth Banner from The Ned a fair few episodes ago, I thought it was time to make a return. But this time, instead of one super huge hotel in the city, we're taking a look at a few stunning properties spread over a somewhat larger area. And if you want examples of how hotels can evolve with the times and bring in new types of guests without alienating their traditional following, then this is the episode for you. Andrew Stembridge is Executive Director of Iconic Luxury Hotels, and they are a small and impressive collection, including the Ligon Arms, a coaching inn that dates back to the 1600s, Clevedon House, a stately home, and Chewton Glen, an 18th century manor house, which has enjoyed half a century of award-winning five-star hospitality in the New Forest. And as you'll hear, Chewton Glen has led the way over the decades. It was one of the first hotels in the country to open a spa in 1990. Under Andrew's leadership, it has also become very family friendly with wonderful treehouse lodges, and more on those in a moment, the Beehive Kids Club, and classes at the hotel's cookery school, The Kitchen. And by hosting Chris Evans' Children in Need events, it's broadened its fan base even more and helped to raise millions of pounds along the way. So how do you introduce so much change and still maintain the historical spirit of a place? Keep listening and you will find out. Andrew Stembridge, thank you so much for agreeing to be on the podcast. It's hugely appreciated. Um, Can you just explain to people listening where on planet Earth are we, please, Andrew? Because it's very grand. Well, we are, I guess, location-wise, we're we're actually on the the Hampshire-Dorset border, uh, literally. And uh, if you look behind you out the window, then there's a little stream there called the Tewton Bunny. And uh, and that is actually the Hampshire-Dorset border. So you you couldn't get more southwesterly if you tried... Um, we're in Cheaton Glen Hotel and Spa, and uh, and very specifically, you're then in a tree house. Um, and this is the use. This is our most recent tree house, and it's the uh, the uh, we now have 14 tree houses altogether, and 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 this is one of them. And and I suppose it's probably like all things that evolve. It's the one that we're we're most proud of. And um, as uh, again to to give the listeners a a bit of insight, you know, we're 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 sitting in this sort of open space with a. Uh, an enormous wraparound deck which has got a couple of hot tubs on it and uh, looking out you've got uh, trees and uh, birds and uh, and all the the wildlife you'd expect and although it's uh, exceptionally damp and, and dreek uh, which is a, a Scottish term outside you know inside it's cozy and we've got our we've got our log burner which is uh, which is, which is uh, roaring away, and uh, it's nice and, and uh, toasty and warm in here. You could be an author. That's an exceptional <laughs> uh, description. All too often, I get you know sat in a chair, Mark. Uh, but that's beautiful. Um, you hear the word treehouse, and you, I, I certainly didn't imagine them. I've, I've heard a lot about them, and it's great to finally come and see them. But yes, I didn't really appreciate the grandeur. Uh, it is beautiful and very decadent. Was was the original ones? Were they similar to this, or is this? Yeah, they're very similar. I mean, I'll say this is this is uh, this is sort of slightly on on steroids, as you say. Um, but uh, and I suppose there's a bit of artistic license in in, in tree houses and and uh, in that really they are they're, they're wooden buildings on stilts. Uh, the nice thing is you don't have to climb up a rope ladder to get in them, and they are as you already sort of implied they're exceptionally luxurious uh, and there's nothing there's nothing rustic about them. And I think actually in many respects we didn't we purposely didn't want them to be. That's sort of almost a, a bit of a cliche in a way. We want them to be um, a, a, a sort of a, even a, a step up from our rooms and suites in the main house already, right. and uh, and something very very different. And I think like yeah, you know, I love 
I love collaboration and I, and, I, and I love when you sort of almost plant a seed and allow an idea to grow, I, I suppose is a, a, a good uh, uh, sort of an analogy there with, with the treehouse. Yeah. But, you know, when we first started this idea, um, we wanted to build some really family friendly accommodation in the grounds. And originally we were looking at doing something which was just more more straightforward and and actually it was a it was a sort of chance meeting um with a uh, a company called blue forest who helped us uh, really come up with this idea and they they do really luxury tree houses or or sorry or small domestic tree houses for probably you know rich russians and and people with huge gardens and and uh, and, and more money than sense and um we we sort of worked with them on this idea and we had this really unique valley which which had a path at the top of the valley and then the land fell away and we thought you know if you could actually have these suites facing the valley so you're literally up in the trees um, and you walk in and and, uh, and and so the whole things were designed around uh, really around the trees and actually what, what was what was what was really interesting in terms of working collaboratively and and, and and very harmoniously you know we went to the local planners and said look we have a valley we know it's in green belt we know it's in a in a it's a in a protected area as well so it's not just green belt but uh, it's a, it, it, from a from from a nature perspective it's a, it's a it's an area of, of special interest and it's one of the i think it's the the last remaining undeveloped low lying valley in the county so we said we know we can't build anything there but if we were to build something there what what, what would it look like and they've said we well, can't i said yeah but if we did what would it? and they said well you know there's lots of trees so therefore you can't damage any tree roots and you know obviously the 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 materials you need to use would be very sustainable and local and etc cetera, etc cetera. so it went on and, and that's why we ended up with these round buildings which were you know which were very sustainable and as i say and all the footings were dug by hand and and so, of course, that added to the cost of them, but it then became, became, became a bit of a labour of love. Uh, there's a thrush just behind you there in the trees, which is just... Uh, um, and, 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 and it's actually at head height. Um, so, um, so, uh, it, um, it, uh, so, so, yeah, so it, and, and that's how it evolved. And then, and, and, and then you start getting into the detail and you start thinking, right, OK, how could we just make these perfect? And, and so we introduced things like um, we have these hatches, um, which actually isn't a completely new idea. I, I you know, I, I, I stole the idea from a project I worked on at the Scotsman in Edinburgh. Um, but the idea being that actually, if, if you don't want to, there's nothing worse than standing in your pajamas, you know, opening the door for someone bringing food to your room when, you know, you just don't want anybody to see you looking like that. And so actually to have a hatch where your food can be delivered and, uh, and then we evolve that into our treehouse breakfast, which comes in a hamper. And when you wake up in the morning, um, your hamper's already there. So, you know, while our, our bakers have been baking all night or since early, early morning and, uh, you know, the chefs have been cutting fresh fruit and, and making nice yogurts and things like that. And, and so when you wake up in the morning in your you sort of get this aroma from your hat, from your, your, your hatch and, and in there is this hamper full of lovely again local fresh and homemade ingredients and home baked ingredients and, and and dishes which you then can either lay up on your table that we're sitting at now or you can take it out onto your your balcony or or you can have it in bed or wherever you want to have it and then you've got a uh, this bean to cup coffee machine so it's not a silly thing with with pods it's this is like this is a, a proper sort of almost barista style coffee machine where you can you can uh, have your you know coffee and then you've got a toaster and if you need it a microwave and and so you know it, the idea isn't you come and sort of cook your own meals but breakfast is very much a uh, a, a sort of you have that in your treehouse and, mm. and and you know and I, I suppose I could go on the, but but the whole thing was everything was focused around the views and this idea of 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 the local flora and fauna not so much and yes of course you know there's there's flat screen TVs in every rooms including the bathroom but but it wasn't about the TVs. It's very much about, as I say, just sitting here and and you know we could turn around and and sort of look for hours at what's going on, uh, you know, in in the trees behind you. Because even at this time of year, it's fascinating. Yeah, no, you're right, and it's uh, it's deepest winter. Well, congratulations, they are stunning. Um, I could literally uh, just move in. They um, yeah, quite quite capable of just being a house where you could spend the rest of your life. Um, you mentioned then so the uh, the planning process, great opener. I love that in the fact that yes, not we would like to build this, can we? But uh, yeah. We cannot build anything. We know that. But if we could, what would it look like? That's brilliant. What was the time frame from that conversation to actually starting to dig holes by hand? It literally was a 
I think probably the whole process was about two years from when the day we opened. Right, that wow, makes that's sense. And we quick. did we did a lot of um, we did a lot of work. I guess at risk in terms of designing because obviously when you're you know you ordinarily you might submit a basic scheme and then start to it but I think we felt so confident I think because I think because we'd worked with the you know they knew what we were expecting you know we're very lucky in the new forest we've got a lot of local support I mean, you know we've always although now thankfully there's a lot more choice in the new forest we've got obviously you know pigs and limewood and and uh, some other really nice you know hotels and restaurants so but but for 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 decades you know literally the new uh, well the cheating Glen was the the only place to go in the forest and i say for me it's really positive that we've got more it's a could i live here and and p so i can enjoy them myself yeah. but also i think it's, it helps us in terms of employment it helps bring you know quality you know people to the area um not 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 just sort of day trippers and and um and uh, people you know staying in caravan parks and, and tents and things yeah. like that so it's it's really good for 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 everybody um but um but 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 yeah it was as i say we we did we did take risks but i think you have to and i think you know it, it, it i have a entrepreneurial streak which sort of you know you you have to believe in a project and 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 believe it's going to work and and that just you know that just helps and you know yeah. you have all the right conversations and, uh, yeah. well we're going to come back to your journey uh, a little bit and your entrepreneurial drive um but we've we've started with tree houses but yeah. Yeah, just again for people who don't know uh, the Tewton glen and we'll also come to the the rest of the hotels uh, within the group but um, can you just describe the Tewton glen a little bit because it's huge from a, is it 130 acres of grounds it's set in? And yeah, 130 acres. It's, I mean, it's a, again, it's, I, I suppose it's, 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 it's an institution, but actually it's an institution which has constantly evolved. And um, I think it, it um, probably without going into too much detail for people, you know, I suppose it, it, it um, you know, it, 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 it's based around an original manor house, which is, uh, uh, dates back to the, the, uh, the sort of 17, 1730-ish, and um, but as I say, it, it sort of Tuting Glen as we know it to now know it today really started in 1966 when a very clever gentleman called Martin Scan um, bought the hotel with his brother. Um, then it sort of morphed into Martin and his wife Briggy, and and they 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 actually they weren't hoteliers at all, but they they loved staying in hotels. And and their their secret was they travelled and travelled and travelled. And every time they came back from somewhere, they were inspired by wherever they'd been. Uh, in terms of, and so it, it just and they they were very sort of selfless in terms of every penny went back into the business and they took again they took some risk they they borrowed a lot of money at, uh, you know in the sort of for example the midnight well the early 90s when interest rates were up at sort of 16 17 percent they borrowed a lot of money which you know almost took them under at the time but you know they were they were and they were also hotel first you know I, I remember uh, Martin telling me that um he wanted all the bathrooms to be on, all the bedrooms to have ensuite bathrooms. And the, even the AA at the time was saying, well, what, why do you want to do that? So, and you can't believe it now, yeah. you know, actually having ensuite bathrooms. And, and so they were, they were in their own way visionary, really, actually. And I'm not convinced that Martin ever really got the recognition he deserved in terms of being such a trailblazer, really, especially for the English countryside. And um, and they were the first, they put a spa in 1990. They added the spa, uh, which interestingly, we're actually we're just 30 years on. Literally, we're just completely. Um, it, it's a building site at the moment, and we're we're spending about a million pounds on it at the moment, wow. completely redevelopment, just the, just the pool areas. Really, yeah. um, but it's but as I say, what they did has mm. literally lasted us. Um, obviously, with good maintenance, but it's lasted us 30 years. How and, long did they have it for? Um, they so they sold in two thousand and six. Okay, long um, time. So they had it for they had it for forty years, yeah. um, and uh, and and they they developed it from being really when they first bought it eight bedrooms, um, eight two bedrooms. bathrooms, and when they sold it, it had fifty two rooms, uh, sorry fifty eight rooms, and then um, in, in my and I, I worked for them previously. Yeah. I actually worked for them twice. So part of my journey is I came here originally in ninety seven. I left four years later. Came back two years after that. Um, but um, I, so I, yeah, so I worked with them twice, and then they they sold the hotel uh, to uh, London and Regional. And yeah. um, but so any and since then, you know, we've added the tree houses, um, we've added the kitchen, uh, restaurant, and cookery school, which we, we, we're in collaboration with James Martin, and that's been, so. And, and and so we've really evolved it. And I think I think you know where. Um, you know, we I still keep in touch with Martin and Briggy a lot, and and they they've always been great because they. 
it's so something interesting. They they a lot of they they live locally as well, and people have said, said oh, you know, gosh, Cheating Glen's changed, and and you know, they would always say, oh, isn't that good? Because it always did in our time. It always changed too, mm. and therefore it'd be it'd be it'd be a crime if it didn't change. So I think it has continued to change, and I think in a way because I um, because I have a young family myself, and I think what 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 I pro- probably. What I'm, one of the things I'm most proud of, other than the treehouse, is the fact that actually we've taken the hotel from being very much not family friendly to a very family friendly hotel, and I think probably one of the most family friendly hotels in the in the UK. Um, because actually, and again, and we've learned from the, you know, there's a lot of good country house hotels there that take families, but I think we we've sort of, I th- hopefully we've got it right for everyone, and mm. I think that's why it's been so successful. It, it's kind of it's it's still it's still great for grown ups, but it's 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 brilliant for children. Yeah, which and, is an impressive uh, line to walk to walk, and I've got some questions around that. But you're right, as a local person, I've yeah. always known the Tewton Glen. I've yeah. come much more in my yeah. uh, recent life, partly for business meetings and and for the odd dinner. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the reputational change you've gone through has just been much less about yeah very traditional country house the tree yeah. houses have helped the kids yeah. the stuff you've done with um bbc children in need it seems yeah, to have exactly. cha- changed yeah. the whole kind of uh, reputation yeah. and so i have can... to well, i have to throw in then mm. quickly just actually the the last i suppose the last piece of the jigsaw uh, uh, the last project we did other than the spa we're working on now was a, a tree house specifically for the for children really um and we call it the beehive um and uh, but it is a tree house and uh, actually, we launched it at Chelsea Flower Show last year, and that is literally it is just for kids. Okay, this is um, like a kids' club kind of thing. This is where yeah. they go and sleep on their own. This no, is no, a, no, yeah, exactly. Daytime. So it's where yeah. we do we do sort of organise stuff for them during the day, and uh, and it, it's it's great. So yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's, it's great. Of, yeah, to, to find somewhere of this quality that's that child friendly, I think is uh, is rare. So it's a good idea. Speaking of which, I was looking on your website last night and having a little bit of a read, and the number of awards that this place has has won is uh, quite phenomenal. Um, is is there one that jumps out in your mind that you're particularly proud of or? the hotel's been winning awards you know before i was even born so you know I, I think it's it's a it's a com it's a sort of i suppose it's a sum of all the parts that um that 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 probably um uh that that, that make it so I, I don't know there's one i mean i think i think probably that yeah the one i remember most i think probably was and it actually it was it wasn't that long after i came back so probably i, I can claim very little credit for it but I remember um, I, um, I I got an invitation to the the Condé Nast Traveller Awards. U- so there's two Condé Nast Travellers: there's UK and USA. Anyway, this was a, an invitation to the Condé Nast Traveller USA Awards, and um, I literally it arrived the day I'd just come back from a promotional trip to the to the states. Uh, in those days, I I did all those USA trips as a, a lot of hoteliers do or or did. And uh, so I'd just come back from a couple of weeks in, in Las Vegas talking to, to hundreds, if not thousands, of travel agents about the hotel. Uh, and, and, and let's say I, I, I hadn't even unpacked my bag when this invitation came along and it was an event in New York and it was just, it was an evening event. And, and I, so I just sent, I said, look, I'm really sorry, I've just come back from states, I can't come. And they and they said, well, you know, we really think you should. And, and I said, well, we have a we have we, we're part of Relian Chateau, so they have an office, so we could send someone from Relian, and you uh, or we have a representation company in New York. Maybe we could send. Them. Nope, nope, nope. Has to be has to be you and only you. So I thought, well, they obviously want us for a good reason. So that means. So eventually, I thought, well, so I, anyway. Long story short, I, I I flew out. It was on the Monday evening, so I literally flew out on the Monday morning and flew back on the Tuesday morning. And uh, you know, I was maybe expecting that. Okay, maybe we've won the the um, the sort of the. In those days, it was all you know. It was it was sort of Europe and and Asia and all sort of different categories, and they have a top ten in every category. They've changed a bit now. Anyway, we um, I thought we might win, and we lo and behold, we were in this in this sort of grand ceremony, and and the budgets for these things were much greater in these days, and uh, we uh, we won the the UK award, which was great. So went up and got that. Anyway, then they go and they do, at the end of the evening, they do the sort of the, the hotel of the year in the world. And it was Cheetah Glen. Wow. Um, and, and it's all voted by readers. And, I, and you know, and, and still, you know, it's, it's, it still um, sends a sort of shiver down yeah. my spine. Because I just, I genuinely wasn't expecting That's it. incredible. And it was worth it. What it year was, was that? That would have been about 2004. 
three through 2004 if that makes sense so a few okay. years ago now yeah. and um you know and they say we've carried on winning awards but that that probably was the most yeah, memorable nice. and that was before it was in its current ownership then yeah yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. and in, in uh, some ways even more exciting yeah absolutely you came here originally um as i think was it ops director yeah, and yeah, then absolutely. you were you were determined that you were going to be a gm by the age of 30 yeah. so you left and went up to scotland i yeah. believe wasn't it what was it that lured you back because you came back pretty soon afterwards wasn't it what, what was it about this place particularly that um well, what, well, i suppose what lured me i mean I suppose that in that sort of at that part of time, again, you know, you're still at that point in your career where you moved around a lot. And I suppose I came here for for two years. Um, you know, in, in, interestingly, when I, when I yeah, when I first came here, I didn't actually bizarrely, and I, I probably never admitted to this. I didn't actually really. There was pit, pits of the hotel I didn't particularly like. It was quite chintzy in those days, and and it was quite there was a form probably a formality to it in terms of you know the the the, the you know the the sort of the duty managers wore morning suits and that sort of thing still. And then the evening, everyone wore dinner suits, and and so um, that that sort of you when you when you remind yourself of that, it shows you how much we've evolved. So, but 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 I, I was very aware of how well known it was, and and also how well run it was, and and so I knew there was a lot to learn. So I said I'd do a couple of years. I ended up staying for four. I guess what lured me away was this personal goal to be a general manager, and um, and also I'm from Scotland. Uh, my my family live an hour south of Edinburgh, and my wife's family live in Glasgow in those days. And um, so it was very convenient. We were thinking of starting a family. So we had both sets of parents an hour away and we loved Edinburgh anyway. And so that's what, and genuinely when we moved there, we, we had every intention of staying, being moving back to Scotland for good. Um, you know, Scotsman was a really interesting project um, and, and I still, uh, I have no regrets about it, but it, it was probably, I, I mean, probably to, 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 to sort of, again, to try and sum it up in a few words was I, in two and a half years there, I had um, 15 years worth of hotel experience, and that's no really? exaggeration. Wow, and and I, I genuinely could write a book about it. And it was, you know, much of it was a proper proper nightmare. Not exaggerating. And it was it was an opening. Um, uh, it was a really tough opening. Um, we were we we were we were really the main investors were two banks. Um, we opened late. We opened over budget. We opened straight into foot and mouth. And then we had 9-11 the same year. And you imagine the, the, the impact on especially US business in Edinburgh particularly. And, and it was a nightmare. And, and, and I say, I, I could write a book. Um, uh, we, I, you know, I remember, my, I suppose probably one of my darkest days was having to, to, to make 20 people redundant in one day. And, and so, and, but as I say, I, I, I learned so much about running hotels, how not to run hotels, and probably resilience and, and that, and, I, and it's something I'm, I'm, and still to this day, you know, I mean, you know, the, the, this place could be on fire and, I, and I, the one thing I wouldn't do is panic. And anyway, the phone rang one day and it was actually Martin Scan and Martin said, oh, um, you may have heard, or, uh, but, 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 you know, and I, and I know you're very, very happy in Edinburgh, Andrew, but Peter Crome, who was my predecessor here, um, has, he's, he's leaving um, and you're the only person we want to do the job. Nice. <laughs> so... So, you know, um, it was, uh, I, I, I didn't play hard to get, but I played slightly hard to get because actually Martin said, well, can you fly down like tomorrow? And I said, well, actually I'm running the, London, sorry, I'm running the Edinburgh Marathon next weekend. So I'm, I'm really sorry, I can't, I just don't have time this week to fly down and see you. And he said, well, I'll fly up and see you. So wow. he flew up to Edinburgh. We, we literally, we met at Edinburgh Airport in a meeting room. He flew back down and, and then I, I started um, I started three months later. The deal was and done. And the, the rest is history. But, um, yeah, at so least yeah. you did it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And no regrets. And, 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 I, and I remember, again, sort of in terms of those moments in your life which are, uh, or your career, where, where they sort of, they're, they're sort of notable, um, in terms of your sort of your thought process, I remember, and, and Peter Chrome is, again, he's one of the industry greats. He's actually, he's 20 years older than me. He's about a foot taller than me at least. Um, and, he, you know, he's got, uh, you know, huge feet and, and huge shoes to fill. And I remember sort of sitting here and that sort of that, you know, that when it hits you, it dawns on you, you're actually you're taking on one of the, the country, if not the world's most famous country house hotels. And I was only 32 at the time. That's no, so young. Um, and I thought, God, how, how, am I, how am I gonna do this? And then I sort of, I, I guess I, I dwelled on it for about 10 minutes and I thought, you know, the only way I can do it is my way. And actually, and, and, and I think, and, and that, and, and, and actually um, that 
really from then on, I never, I, I, I never, I never looked back if that makes sense, because I never ever questioned my mm. own decisions or, or even questioned what had been done before. I thought, look, this is the start of a new chapter for the, for the hotel. And, and it was, and that's what's, again, that's allowed us to be so successful. And I think actually interesting, it's something that I remember when we had our, I think it was the, our 40th anniversary dinner. And I remember saying, or maybe 50th anniversary dinner, which Martin's come with. I remember him saying that, I think there'd only ever been four managers here of which, you know, I was one and, and Peter was the other. Uh, Robin Hudson were before that. And, 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 and basically Martin said that each one was completely different, but each one was appropriate for the decade they managed in. Mm-hmm. And actually bizarrely, all of us, all of us had done, all of us had 10, about 10 years um, really? each. And I suppose, although I've been here much longer than that now, probably in terms of just running, in terms of, in terms of just running Chute and Glen, that mm. probably was, that was a, about, that was about a decade ago. Yeah, well, that was, sort of pretty you know, fair, then, so. fair point of time or period of time to, uh, yeah, stay 100% motivated. I think sometimes you need a change, don't yeah, you? And absolutely. that doesn't need to be a change of yeah. company. Albeit the, um, the company did change or the business did change because 2006 or seven was it where there was the it was in essence sold um was that a surprise we were, you know, what brought that about and was that a positive change it, it, it was it was a complete surprise to be honest with you it came out of the blue for me uh it was a bit of a shock and and i must admit i, I thought oh gosh life is going to change um dramatically and um and obviously was quite nervous about it and especially going from having you know owners who literally had an office on site and were here probably you know certainly two or three days a week were very very involved in really anything from a, anything to do with development and um you know they they um every time anything went wrong there'd be a public inquiry on it <laughs> um and actually and and then we went from and in those days you know uh london regional um there which is you know is owned by two brothers um they they weren't they they weren't a hotel company they weren't mm. they had literally um, they 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 had a couple of assets uh, rather than hotels and and uh, you know uh, and, and and so actually initially it was all very quiet we were really I was left very much left to my own devices which 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 I thrive on to yeah, be honest with you I'm perfect. very happy not to be uh, asked or, or told to do anything um, yeah. as I say I'm, I've, uh, I'm I'm very I've always been very independent and. Um, and and so, but but it was great. And I say that you know, for me, you know, it's changed things. Um, you know, I've I've learned a lot because of the process. You know, we're far more we're far more commercial. You know, everything we do has to have a, a demonstrable ROI. Um, you know, and and over this time, you know, as we've got bigger, you know, we we we've, I mean, our, in in the time that from when from when uh, London Regional bought the hotel, we've we've doubled our turnover here, um, which again I'm I'm proud of, and and probably. You know, quadrupled our, our profitability, um, and so so I, I think you know I say I've 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 learned from it. You know, obviously at times it's not as it's so it's not as cozy and friendly because you know again you're working for quite a big you know corporate beast as it were, albeit a you know a, a family company. But actually, you know what they have been they've always been really good at investing. I was going to say presumably um, access to funds must have yeah, changed. Yeah, and, and that's great, and and that's what that's all you can ask for, and they are true to their word, and 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 so actually, what it has done is really allowed, you know, Cheating Glen to to to, to flourish, mm. and and uh, and I say, and I've got a huge respect for them, and they're very you know they're very very clever people mm. and very hugely successful, and now actually. You know their portfolio. I mean, I, I, I say, I, I guess we'll come on to iconic and. and Going to do it now, actually. But, yeah, um, yeah. but so, actually, yeah. their, their overall portfolio is is sort of knocking on almost a hundred hotels now. They own worldwide. Oh really? So they're, oh, a big, they're a big hotel company. Wow. And and and, and the big <laughs> shift for them is moving from you know obviously they, you know they've always had an interest in being the landlord. I.e., they you know they've owned. Um, they, you know, they've got a number of assets where they have a, you know, they, it might, the hotel might be run by Fairmont or, um, you know, like, so for example, they, they own the Fairmont in Barbados, they own the Hilton on Park Lane. So they own some really prime real estate, yeah. uh, but, and they have, uh, you know, hotel companies, uh, management companies in there. Uh, and actually, but the, the difference in the, the ones, the, the, the ones that I run are the ones yeah. that we, we own and we own the, the, the okay. Propco and the Opco as it were. Yeah. And, and uh, so uh, and 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 so the, yeah, the whole the whole caboodle, as it were. Yeah, I didn't realise that it was um, such a big group. Yeah. Obviously, uh, iconic luxury hotels is is it four coming on five? Is that right? Or? Four coming on five. Yeah. Um, so uh, the the hotels are obviously Cheat and Glare, where we are today, uh, Clifton um, in Berkshire, the Ligon Arms in Broadway, uh, Eleven Cadogan Gardens, which uh, in in uh, just off Sloane Square uh, in Chelsea, which is is. Uh, 
Actually, the odd one out for we actually run that as a, a management contract for another owner. So okay. it's actually owned by the Cadogan Estate. Right. And we run it on their behalf. And that's something as part of the evolution of Iconic. We're actually looking to really? to have more management contracts where we actually run hotels for other people. And we've got the the sort of the know-how now to do that. And then obviously the last, the fifth project, the uh, last property is, is opening in September of this year called the Mayfair Townhouse. And that's going to be another London hotel. It's going to be our largest hotel at 172 rooms. Wow. So, um, so yeah, that, and that's a, that's a very exciting project. It is, isn't um, it? I love the confidence that you deliver that it's opening in September. That's it. That's fact. It's, yeah, uh, yeah cause, oh, cause these things are, uh, they're challenging, aren't they? I think building is, is it conversion of an old building? Is it? Yeah, it's actually, it, it was a hotel and right. therefore, and, okay. and, and actually, it, I suppose our appetite, we've looked at a lot of, um, most of what passes my desk, uh, certainly in recent months, has been sort of other buildings, lovely, you know, palaces, castles, um, often even sort of iconic office buildings that not are complete conversions. Yeah. Sorry? <laughs> so it's not the same as my desk, yeah. Andrew, I, I like um, that desk. Yeah. And, uh, but, but actually this, this so, so it's, it's on Half Moon Street, um, it actually was, uh, it's all, the old building that was the Hilton Green Park, right? Um, and um, but it, we've completely gutted it, and it's a be- it's a it's an incredible building. It's actually it's fifteen townhouses wow. um, which were were knocked together, seven of which are listed, and uh, and it's an incredible address. It backs onto Shepherd's Market, and and bizarrely, it, you know, for me, I mean, I, I you know, obviously. I, I sort of know the area fairly well, but now that I'm obviously going there on a regular basis, it's it's a really interesting. You know, you've got, you've got you know you're sort of on the edge of Mayfair. You've got Green Park on one side, Piccadilly, and I see, and then Shepherd's Market, which is a sort of really fascinating, uh, you know, quite uh, it's sort of a, a infamous history, as it were. But but um, but it's just really yeah, really nice. It's a really nice part of, part of town, and I'm and I'm. And I'm convinced the hotel is going to be a huge success. I think mm. we've, I think we've really sort of, uh, um, sort of found uh, quite a, a sort of niche, especially in that part of town. And um, I say, and and I never, truthfully, I never thought I'd ever be opening, opening a London hotel, and probably, especially not one of that scale. You know, it's, mm. it's, it's not, it's not huge as far as London hotels go, but it's certainly bigger than anything we've done before. That's very different to having 130 acres in the New Forest, yeah, I guess, absolutely. isn't it? What, what, why specifically? What's, what's the niche that that's going to fill then? That's so different for London. I think, I think for me, you know, obviously you've got your your Park Lane hotels and your and your sort of I suppose the the, the likes of the sort of Maybourne hotels, which are the Claridge and the Connaughts, and and then I think once you and again without being too maybe disrespectful to to sort of my my sort of hotelier friends, I think for me when you sort of step down a level from that that really uber luxury and and and, and, and pretty ridiculously expensive price bracket. To probably a more, you know, a still, still very much in the world of luxury, but but something which is, it's just, a, you know, it's probably, you know, it, it's 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 more, you know, it's it's more BMW and Mercedes and Audi than than, than Rolls Royce and Bentley, mm-hmm. and 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 once you enter that world, then actually there's a there's, there's you know there's a lot of hotels which are very bland, mm-hmm. you know, obviously you've got the the new kids on the block, which are you know the 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 the, the, the the sort of hoxony type hotels, which are again, they're sort of they're, they're a bit, bit more sort of organic and 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 and, and raw and, and 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 trendy. And I think there is a still very much a market for something in the middle, which is mm-hmm. is neither that. So it's not trying to be, it's not trying hard to be hip and trendy, um, but it 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 um, is yeah, yeah, just sit somewhere nicely in the middle. Um, yeah. Again, the model of the hotel is quite quite exciting because actually we we've. we've specifically chosen not to have a restaurant per se um you know actually operating hotel restaurants in london is really quite hard you know which is why people often often the go-to choice is a a name chef yeah. or a, a celebrity chef so we thought look why why bother you we're in mayfair you've got so many great restaurants on your doorstep you don't need to so i think we're gonna we, you know the focus is on 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 brilliant basics and just having the you know the best breakfast you know known to man um, you know, lovely bedrooms, but again, you know, because of this, it's an old townhouse, so a lot of them are quite small. But that's fine. You know, a lot of you know, I, I often find myself in town, and you know, you, you how 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 long do you actually spend in your hotel bedroom? You want it to be, you want a great bathroom, you want it to be really comfortable. You want obviously, you know, the 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 luxury beds, the luxury linens, and and, and all of that, and great service. But you don't need a palatial suite, and and you don't need all the you know the 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 the, the sort of um, I, I suppose some of the additional services, which you, you, you're, you know, I say when you're there, not there for very long, and mm. and I think so. That's 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 really it in a nutshell. You know, we've got, um, you know, we've got everything from you know, a number of what we're calling cabin rooms, which are, which are, you know, 
quite compact right through to some penthouse suites as well but 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 i say the main thing will be our i suppose our, our, our sort of what which comes from ilh is our our sort of unique service as it were mm, and, yeah, and it's very this you know yeah. uh, it's sort of personalities as it were and, and that's our and i suppose our, in a way i suppose the you know our um our pillars um for um you know our pillars for uh, for iconic are their iconic addresses um people with personality um, unique experiences and then effortless hospitality and that's the whole and actually that that sort of sums up Mayfair Townhouse in a nutshell yeah no, I read that last night yeah. it's uh yeah no it's really nice how long have you been in the building doing the refurb uh it'll be it'll be a couple of years once we've by the time we've opened it began in two years so not not the similar scale to this so again yeah. we owned it as I say we London Regional bought it when it was still a Hilton and then we closed it and as I say the the project's been going on for Gosh, probably yeah, just over a year now, and and they're well, you know. I think the reason I'm confident with September is they they seem to be on track, and and I think all the you know, there's a sort of scale of things that can go wrong if that makes yeah. sense, especially in old buildings. <laughs> Absolutely, and, uh, we've done it, those, uh, and yeah, and, and actually, I think we're out we're out we're out of the woods now if that makes sense. It's the so, plumbing that's normally the bit, isn't it? It's yeah, all the old well, pipework. Thankfully, we've done everything. New. I mean, yeah, the, again, one of the scratch. easiest. I mean, literally, we've stripped it back to bare boards, mm. and it's a it's a really interesting. I mean, actually, when it was a, when it was when it was, uh, a, 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 it felt it felt very bland before. But it's such an interesting building, and it's quite you know, say, and there's so many sort of interesting architectural elements to it, and and the corridors you're up and down, and it's and it sort of it all all adds to the fun of running it as a hotel because you know, I mean, things like trolleys, for example, don't really work very well on, yeah. on so many different levels. But yeah, I say very, very, very excited about it's, it. It's funny how important those things are, though. I think, isn't it, compared to your kind of new builds and your purpose built, you would never design a place with the air quality little staircases no. everywhere but there's something about it that i think as humans we we just love that quirky eccentricity it just feels better well, we and that's now. what hospitality yeah. is isn't and it but there was that period of time where everything was boarded over wasn't it yeah, and things absolutely. were filled in and, yeah. and that's where that's why as as we've stripped it back literally to bare boards and 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 the rafters you know you you do you find things that i, I say had just been covered up yeah. and, and and i say it's and and it's it's all those things which are going to make it very interesting for people staying there and and um, and then that sort of that that personality then needs to shine through with with the people we employ and, and i say yeah. and, and that's what you know i, I think it's it's um, clearly you know obviously uh, you know everyone knows that people are the most important element of any hotel the most important ingredient but but actually finding those people that are going to genuinely sort of make you know and again our, 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 we have a purpose which is common to all the iconic hotels and that's to make every guest want to return and and that might sound so obvious but when we when we came up with it um and it was one of those ones where as ever you know we, there's a, a, a group of us uh, my sort of senior team we sat in a room for a day coming up with these things and, and actually to, to make every guest want to return as a purpose for all, all of our people and that's for me included and it, and they say it, it it seems too obvious and too basic, but actually, having had and worked with and worked for companies previously where you had for probably something which is far more sort of highbrow as it were, but to actually have something as baking saying, look, actually your job is just to make that that person in front of you to want, want to return, hmm. and and actually if you do that, then then you know that your business becomes a very simple model at that point in time and. And and, that, and and it's the most flattering thing that can ever happen in a hotel is someone saying, "Yeah, I'm going to come back. I'll, 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 I'm, 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 I'll, or I'll, you know, I'm going to recommend you to a friend or whatever it may, whatever it may be." Yeah. No, I think it's uh, it's such a simple concept, as you say. In reality, how you deliver that is uh, is fascinating. I think, isn't it? And I, and I know this is your core belief is about empowering your team, I guess, to deliver that however they see fit. By so by it not being you know five thousand word essay on here are all the things and here are the rules you're going to follow and that kind of thing you see in the casual dining sector where it's it's kind of like, right, you must welcome the guests within 15 seconds. You yeah. must recommend two starters within 90 seconds and a bottle of wine within the first two minutes. And it, and it makes me want to sort of, you know, you vomit on the formulaic yeah. approach. Yeah, um, but, it, but it's not even, and that the, the, the sad thing is actually, and this is this is where it's hard because again, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm never going to criticise the, 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 the very successful sort of large and, and, and luxury brands that are, are international brands. But they to the uh, uh, but I have a, an experience and I and I, I, I won't say which brand it is because it wouldn't be fair. But I, I, I was in the states and I was a very well known, very highly regarded, and and I I love them as a hotel brand. But but uh, but 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 my um, you know my experience revolved around I, I I'd lost my luggage on the way, which actually annoyingly was my fault. So I was even more annoyed about it. And and anyway, long story. I had a, I had a, I had a, I had a really bad journey, and the final straw was I lost my luggage and. 
again, long story short, within sort of eight minutes of arriving at the hotel, eight different people had asked me the same question, which was, how was your journey? Wow. And and I said to the first person, oh, I had the worst journey on earth. I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm really annoyed, lost my luggage. Blah, blah, blah. And, and, but not, at no point did anyone say, right, you've lost your luggage. Um, what, what can we do for you? You know, and they just went through this, yeah, what I call mechanical service. And it might be mechanical, i.e. Swiss watch, i.e. everything's perfect, but actually, it wasn't, there was no, there was no, there was no empathy, no, in, in, no nothing no intuitive about it, no real hospitality. And actually someone needed to say, look, what do you need? Do you want a cup of tea? Uh, do you want gin and tonic? Um, do, you need, do, you need, do you need us to run you to the local store to get some clean underwear? Do you need a charger for your laptop or your, your phone? What, what do you, what can we do to help? And I just got, I got sent to the bar to wait for my room, which wasn't ready till three o'clock. And, and it's just, and, and that was so disappointing. And I think, you know, I've always known it from that point on, actually, I, I probably felt that even more that had to be able to put a member of the team in front of a guest and look at them and, and say, right, actually, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Guest, you, you, I can clearly see the last thing you want me to do is to run through where the bar is and the spa is and all these things just now because you just look like you don't want to hear anything. So again, say to them, I, I can tell you're, you've had a long journey. Let's get you to the room as quickly as possible. Mm. When, when you want a show around, just shout and I'll bring, I'll do it. Yeah. And in the meantime, how about that gin and tonic? Yeah. And it's just, and it's just that sort of, that, 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 as you would if someone was coming to your you know, house or, yeah, or, or you know, I, I, saying to someone before you even start, do you, know, do you need to go to the bathroom or whatever it may be? It's just, it's, it's just as I say, it's, 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 it's humans on humans. And exactly. I think- it's all and about that, being yeah, human, absolutely. isn't it? Yeah, this is why this podcast is called The Humans of Hospitality mm. and not the, the processes yeah. or the brands or the businesses. Um, and, it, and it's disappointing that sometimes we train the human out of people because most people, I think, you know, we certainly look for it. I know um, Danny Meyer talks about this, but it's that that hospitality reflex, basically, isn't it? Is that just you just automatically want to make pe you know people's lives better. And we all know how to do that, really, don't we? Or most of us yeah. do. And if you have that and you actually want to do it and it's a reflex rather than something you have to think about, then then great. And I think some of the, some of the best opportunities opportunities to impress guests are actually when things do go wrong because how you respond to that and if they had dealt with it and run you down the shops to to buy some clothes or recommended somewhere that could have been such a completely different experience wasn't it and, and so much better than just your your bulk standard arrival um, yeah and i think i think that's and i want i mean i worked in the states um on three occasions actually and i think I, I th the one thing i learned from the Americans actually, rather than American hotels, was um, Americans, especially New Yorkers, are very good at complaining. In fact, they, they, they you know, they, they're, they're much, the Brits are, are hopeless at complaining on the yeah. whole, and they don't know how to complain properly. Whereas the, the Americans sort of, in, 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 they, 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 if something goes wrong, they're very quick to tell you, but if you put it right, then they are loyal for forever. Mm. And they have this understanding. It's it's it, and 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 actually um, because they know that you will react accordingly. You do the right thing because things do go wrong. And 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 I think so. Some of our some of our most loyal guests now, our regular guests, are people where actually the first encounter we've had with them has been because there's a there's a problem. But because we've and and, and you know and, and some of them become you know you end up with a you know a, a sort of a, a probably uh, not I would go as far as say friends but you end up with a sort of more personal relationship with these people and you know they 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 keep in touch with you because you've actually dealt with their 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 problem and and and, and seen it and and I think that and I think it's it's you know for me for me the judge of any good organisation is is not the fact that things go wrong it's what's then done to put it right and and people are actually hearing and, and I would say to the to, to our team you know put yourself in their shoes you know if, if somebody's you know somebody's saying well I've, I've you know I've waited half an hour um for my for my meal um you know the normal reaction from the team um unguided is oh well no actually it's only 25 minutes which, and, and, and it's <laughs> yeah, like check the tickets it's, on the CCTV. It, does, it doesn't it doesn't <laughs> yeah it doesn't matter it feel whatever for whatever reason it, it feels too long exactly and we left a, we left a void there which which was and you know and people aren't generally understanding so be honest with them don't you know and it's 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 um so it, you know so so i think yeah it, for me it's it, it it isn't it isn't rocket science but I, and actually it makes it far more enjoyable for the team because actually, you know, it shows you trust them. And I think that's, the, I think the trouble is, I think the brands, they had to, because they've gone global to try and get, deliver consistency. So, you, so I understand they're almost a victim of their own success Absolutely. because to deliver this consistent brand, mm -hmm. they've had to sort of almost train their teams to death. And then, and I think the, 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 the teams are so nervous about stepping across the line as it were, 
and and you know we you know I say uh, we encourage our team to make decisions and if even if they make mistakes it's like okay we'll just learn from it it's fine you know yeah I'm actually very relieved that it's uh, not really possible to become that big and that global or at least it's exceptionally rare to be able to do that and uh, and still have that personality because yeah. it's a relief for the rest of us isn't it? at the end of the day we don't all want to be owned by three or four huge corporate brands do we and the fact that you know the, the smaller guys can still give that personality and, and be human particularly in hospitality for me my, my bugbear with hospitality is you know it was never supposed to be a commodity it's something no. we've done for 10 of thousands of years you know we break bread around fire it should be completely natural it shouldn't be something that we turn into a process so if anything you know any industry survives that and stays human and isn't dominated by the digital sector and this process stuff then i think it should be our sector yeah. um specifically though when you're interviewing people and and you need you know you're looking for that that reflex and that innate skill can you pick that up in an interview do you think and what's what skills have you learned over the years that help you uh, find the right people who have that who get that balance right between needing to be really professional really good at what they do but also that little twinkle in their eye and that sort of cheeky bit of humanity that makes uh, an interaction memorable yeah i, th- I think it's it it, it, it is it, it's it, it's it's hard to be honest with you um and and i think it's it's about you know actually we now um and this is where something again actually what's quite interesting we're, we're sort of more we are definitely more process driven than we used to be because now we are, you know, across the four hotels, I mean, and when, you know, once Mayfair Townhouse opens, we'll have 150 more people, but we've already got about 800 people um, uh, in, in, in our teams. So we've had to ourselves bring a little bit of that process, which again, we, 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 we but, but not, not the mechanical side of it. So we have our behave, behaviors, um, that we have eight behaviors that um, our, our teams work to, and, and we actually now bring that into the the interview process. So actually, we we actually so all our interview questions are based around. So we have we have set questions to make sure we we don't we don't you know we, we, we nothing remains sort of uh, unasked as it were. And uh, and then our review all our review process with all our, our team members is actually based around behaviours and actually the the um, you know and and, and but the, you know and those behaviours include being intuitive and being passionate. Uh, being flexible and all of these things you'd expect. So, so and though, and that's actually helped us enormously in terms of you know obviously everyone works to the same behaviours. So actually we we're trying to find the the, the right people. Hmm. Um, but I th- yeah, I think it's, it's it's just about looking in people's eyes and actually seeing. You know, I think you can tell. You know, you can tell people that from, and that's why I, yeah, I, I, I suppose I I really don't. And again, uh, apologies in advance to to some of my sort of a, a, a recruitment agent friends that I have in the industry, but I, I really don't like, it's not that I don't like recruitment agencies or headhunters. I think it, for me, it's not that them I don't like, it's the process of actually, I, we, we want to employ people that want to work for us. Yeah, not, simple as that. It's not, it's not, it's not, we don't want people that are just looking for a job. And don't get me wrong, sometimes, you know, obviously sometimes it works well because, you know, somebody, we don't know somebody's looking and they don't know we're looking. And therefore it is a, you know, they are sort of matchmakers in that respect. But, but, but on the whole, we want people that are, are, want to, want to work for us in the same way that, you know, I, when I first came to Student Glen, I didn't apply for a job. I, I wrote, I wrote to Martin Scan. Um, I didn't know him. Someone knew him. They put me in touch, and I wrote to Martin Scan and said, "Have you got any jobs?" You know, and, and that's how it worked. And, and, and you know, I'd really like to work there. And, and so that's what that's what we want. We want people who want to work here. We also want what people to work who want to work in hospitality. Mm. Um, actually, interestingly, some of our some of the people that I I, I sort of uh, well, I, I guess enjoy working. I mean, I enjoy working with everyone, but 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 what I enjoy working with most are people that have maybe been pointed in in a different direction by their parents, either, you know, they've gone on to be accountants or lawyers or all sorts yep. of things. You get these people who are, you know, generally, you know, very well educated and very well qualified in what they do, but they just haven't enjoyed it. And actually they've come into hospitality because they actually enjoy it. And, and, you know, it's not, you know, I, I, it, you know, hospitality, as you all know, it's not for the faint hearted. And, and, um, and so therefore actually to find people who love doing it and you just can't, as I say, you, you can't replicate that. And actually, so when you're, you know, when you talk to, although I say we do have our, our sort of, I, I guess our set question, but at the end of the day, when you're interviewing, it's just trying to, it's trying to get under their skin. It's trying to make, understand what makes them tick. And also it's, it's getting, trying to, trying to get them to sort of, sort of maybe expose, not their vulnerable side, but actually they, they be honest about 
you know, I always, I always sort of drill people not on their weaknesses, but you know, the, we've all got things, me included, uh, or others included, that things that you, you kind of you, you know hate about yourself, but you wish you could change, but you probably you really struggle to. You get to that point where you're too long in the tooth, or or all the all the things that you compensate for. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing we do, which is very but it's probably a little bit maybe corporate, but we pro, we do profile or certainly all of our managers we profile, right. um, and we use a very very good thing called Insights, which actually profiles people on colours. Yeah, um, and that's that's absolutely fascinating, and that mm. really is that 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 got again. I could I could talk all day about what that shows you about people, but I've never, in fact, I've only ever found one person that that we didn't take them on, but they said no, that's not me. But really? I mean, literally, my my profile and all my you know our senior team, all our profiles. You know they're they're almost bang on. They 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 sort of they, yeah they are. Yeah. No, yeah, I think they're, they're, I've done a few yeah. of those and and they're incredibly accurate. Yeah. Freakily so. Yeah. You think how Absolutely. can that how can that be yeah. possible from yeah. just and that's asking those questions? That's a discussion point. And which which some, system is it you use? Which, it's called? called Insights. Right. Um, okay. And and um, it's as I say it, in its most basic form. It, it, it basically you, we've all got four colors in it all, and, and 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 basically you you get a sort of color. Your 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 color ranking, as it were, and in terms of and yeah, gen, generally, you know, people, you know, I'd say to 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 to, to typecast people, you know, people who, who people who would work in HR, you'd want them to have strong green in them because they're they're sort of empathetic, and blue is very sort of countenance, very organised. Um, the yellow is very creative, so you'd expect chefs to be have a, a bit of yellow, and then red is sort of you know quite. Uh, uh, sort of uh, dem- well, not pretty demanding, but but but, but sort of st- strong, but and and dri- driven, I suppose, probably is the right word. So yeah. you know, I, I, as you'd imagine, I've got a, a lot of red in me, but but it does, you know, you want everything done yesterday. You, you, yeah. you can be a little bit sort of. Um, you know, not bull in a china shop, but you, you know, you sort of, you, 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 you know, and actually, but it, but what's fascinating is when it comes to you working with your teams, you actually understand, you know, you know, blue people will do something for you, but they they, they need a week's notice or a couple of weeks. You can't say to them, look, I need it this afternoon. They yeah. don't like that. Yeah, no, I think you know, it's fascinating. Once you know your team that way, uh, it's just understanding, isn't it? It's yeah, just absolutely. being conscious about people's uh, idiosyncrasies yeah. rather but, than sort but of But we brought that, but I think the key thing is we've now brought that into, again, we would, we would always profile, uh, certainly managers before we take right. them on that and okay. actually understand more because actually how they fit into mm. a team is really important. And actually what we don't clearly... You, what you don't want is is everyone to be the same because yeah. that's a nightmare. life's a rainbow, isn't it? Yeah, you absolutely. literally need, yeah. That, yeah. need that in your team. Yeah. Um, you sort of alluded to this, I suppose, with parents maybe uh, you know not pushing people into this sector. And I get it. I've got a couple of young kids, and I would probably do a fair amount to uh, to talk them out of going into hospitality. Whilst on the flip side, absolutely loving it if they did because of all of the you know the, mm. the stuff that I love about it. But I I definitely love it more than I hate it. But you know, it's a tough, tough sector. Um, we have a reputation, I suppose, particularly in the kitchens, but probably across the industry for long hours, weekends, you know, working hard, you know, poor pay traditionally. Um, do you think it's changed uh, in the in the sort of, you know, I don't know, 20 or so years that you've been doing this? Um, and do you think there's more we can do? And have you seen any great examples as a sector that we can do to retain that talent and to attract people that you know, maybe weren't, yeah, the traditional people that fell into hospitality because they couldn't do anything else? I think I think it has changed enormously. Um, I think people's perceptions haven't changed, and I think that's our biggest hurdle at the moment. I think I think parents um, who aren't familiar with our industry, or maybe parents who who are maybe had a <laughs> maybe had a, a job when they were you know in a bar or or, or a restaurant or something when they were growing up. Um, so I think and, and and sort of schools and careers, and and so I think we are you know we're we're trying to do our bit. We 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 myself and obviously our our, our team in HR and our other general managers go into local schools and colleges and we try and spread the good word i think as an industry have changed enormously i mean i think people and that's actually being what i think the biggest change actually now is the 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 um um the gen the gen y's uh the millennials who are who are are who are actually they're they're different they are in my opinion the only the first generation who haven't adapted to suit the work environment we are having to adapt to suit them and they 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 work in a very different way. You know, they 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 don't they don't they don't want to do their their work life balance is more important than anything else. So I think so I think one of the things that changed. So in, in in my day when I was I guess sort of growing up as it were, then you just did the hours that you did and you got paid what you did and and you know you were never really paid for the hours you did. 
we morphed probably in the last few years to a point where everyone's, everyone's being paid for every hour they do. If they do extra time and they're not paid for it, they get time back. And 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 I think our general conditions, our benefits, are and, and it's come on leaps and bounds, you know, in terms of what we what we deliver. But actually, I think the pace of change is being driven more by the millennials who actually who who want even more than we're giving. And mm. I, and I think for although I think we I think we think we've changed a lot and we have and i think probably i'd like to think that we are we as a company are and a business are, are probably not at the forefront but we're at the you know we're at the we're at the sort of the right the very much the right end of the curve as it were but but i do think actually the millennials are driving us harder than we can almost keep up with if that makes sense yeah. i think they are they're one thing which is a, for me is a really good thing mm. you know I, I think it's something that we would you know i i, I you know I, I would love a scenario where actually we were comparable with any other industry and we weren't and, and so I think we are you know I think we you know we are guilty of of, of, of you know of, of of taking people and team members for granted and I think that they are demanding it's changing um, I do think actually you know although I'm I was a a, a, a staunch remainer um, I, I do think actually the whole situation with Brexit will force us even harder although I think we'd introduce a lot of mechanisms to really focus on a, a UK workforce I think that's gonna that's gonna force the issue even even harder which I think is a good thing um, so it, you know I, I, so, so I think I think that I think there's a lot of I think there is a lot of good um, I think there's lots of good examples of, of I think there's lots of best practice around um, you know, I think in particular, you know, a, a really good example, I think, is someone like Sally Beck, um, who's the current hotelier of the year um, and a fellow master inholder. And she, you know, her their, their, their sort of motto is to make uh, the, um, the, 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 the Lancaster, um, um, the, the Royal Lancaster, the uh, happiest hotel in, in London. You know, and, and she nice says that. To have, she said, "Yeah." And she says that cautiously in front of the rest of the London hoteliers, but but actually to have that ambition, yeah. you know, and, and just that's great. And that's a big, that's a big hotel. And and I think, and she's done a lot. And I, she's a very good example. Um, as I say, I, I, I've heard, uh, you know, she's a, she's an old friend, but she's also someone I've heard speak a lot recently because she's hotel of the year, and she has sort of referenced the fact that it's only because her employers were flexible. She was bringing up her. She had a, a you know, she was a, a mother in hospitality and because her her employers allowed her to be flexible in terms of her working hours they al that allowed her to have a, a career and her husband to have a career mm. and if it wasn't for that she wouldn't be in the position she is now so i think there's i think there's a lot to be learned so i think you know i i think we're all learning from each other i think we're all talking i mean one thing we are as an industry we're very good about we, we share a lot with and i think we share best practice and we're not we're not we don't keep things to ourselves and i think probably you know, we've always done that from a business perspective, but more and more we're doing that behind the scenes. And I think our, our people, people are talking to, you know, their, their counterparts, you know, so I think, and we're, you know, I say we, 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 we go to things like the general managers conference. Um, and so I think it's all about people. And in fact, one of the things that we're, you know, I, I, I um, one of our sort of, uh, our goals is to make sure we give all of our members of the team a good manager. So mm -hmm. because the, yeah. the, taking, I mean, taking the theory that people leave people, not businesses. So actually, if we do have a, a problem with churn or, or staff turnover in any specific areas, it's actually normally down, not down to us or what we're doing or the staff food or the staff benefits. It's normally down to the fact that that, that, that leader in that department isn't maybe as good as they, they could be or should be. And, and, and maybe that's because we've hired the wrong person. Maybe it's because we haven't. We, we just need to give them some more support or, or some more coaching themselves. And so one of the things that we introduced last time for the first year, which were, again, another thing I was really proud of was this, was this what we call our HUD conference. And, and, and I was very aware that I'm lucky I get to go to conferences, events, networking, dinners, all sorts of things. So, you know, I get out all the time. And so that stretches your, it, it gives you the opportunity to think and learn and, and, and as I say, network. And I felt the guys were asking to, to, to be even better at, at this, they they don't get out, you know. They 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 you know their their days aren't monotonous, but they you know they're 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 on the business all the time, in the business all the time. So we came up with this idea of putting on a conference for them, not for our general managers, just for them. Nice. Um, so last year, and literally almost almost to the day, actually this time last year, we got fifty four of our managers together. Um, we did a twenty four hour conference. We started with a, a storytelling dinner. 
and we got some, um, um, I mean, honestly, amazing stories from people. And this was about anything they wanted, something to do, you know, something hopefully relevant. But, you know, it was everything from the chefs that were cooking to why they'd chosen that dish to people who, why they'd end up in hospitality or maybe a situation where they'd done something for a guest or, you know, and we had, you know, we, we, had, we had all sorts of things that came out, even some mental health issues came out, which is obviously very, very topical at the moment. And that was amazing that people had the courage to actually talk in front of their peers about these things. And then the next day we had four speakers and, 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 and it was so successful that we we're doing the same again this year. But the, this year's theme is, is all about people. The whole, all four speakers, it's about teams and people and, and, and just again, building this idea that what we need to do is make sure that wherever you work in this, in our business, in our hotels, then your manager is a good leader and, and giving them the skills. And as I say, so it's, it's coming up in, in a few weeks time and uh, we're sort of enjoying and, and um, yeah, we've got some, I say, really good speakers again. Yeah, exciting. And there are some nervous leaders in your business who, uh, who realise that they're being assessed from below. <laughs> well, they're not really, I say, yeah, I don't think they're really set. I think, I think they feel invested in, I think that's the thing. We, we're actually, I, I think the, the thing is, I, I think I, I realised that actually we were being unfair because we were asking, uh, we were asking too much of people. And I think the role you know, again, you know, even if you think the role of a general manager or the role of a, of a restaurant manager, I mean, you know, it, it, the, the role used to be one of mine host, mm -hmm. you know, and now, you know, you have to be, you know, you have to be, you know, you know, strong on HR, strong on finance, strong on marketing. And at the same time, you have to have a, 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 a room, a, a restaurant, a dining room full of happy guests as well. And, and let's say, it, it, you know, the, the, num the, the number of disciplines they need to be good at is, is, is enormous mm. relative to, to, to life. And, and I don't think we've, again, over the years necessarily giving people those skills. So I think no, we're, true. yeah. Yeah, I think that's why we're an exciting sector to work in, actually, is yeah. because your opportunity to get such a yeah, diverse range of skills, as you mentioned, in, in accounts and marketing and branding and people and relationships, you, you don't get that in many kind of, you know, careers, I guess, yeah, and apprenticeships, absolutely. if you're going to go and work in a, in, a, in a bank. You know, they can be all too often, uh, yeah, tunnel vision, I suppose. Yeah. Whereas, yeah. It, and we should, I mean, I, I genuinely, I've never... I've never had a day at work where I didn't feel, where, where I ever felt bored. Yeah. Uh, bored's not a, it's not yeah. a word that's in my vocabulary. <laughs> uh, and I've never felt a day where I didn't feel, that it wasn't, you know, I always say every day is a school day, you're always learning and you also feel stretched. And I say you are, you know, I, I mean, I never imagined that, you know, I'd be developing projects and, and, and hotels. And, you know, I was lucky actually, my dad was an architect. So in a funny sort of way, just subliminally, I think I learned a heck of a lot from him, which is which is very useful now, to be honest with you. But it does mean also it means that when you involve yourself, you're not just you're not reliant on those expertise like architects and interior designers. You're actually able to input into it. And actually, I mean, often we, you know, you know, often we find the solution. You know, we were looking at a plan and say, well, why can't we use that space for that? And 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 it, and again, it makes it. You know, that's why I say as we, you know, coming back to where we are sitting today in the tree houses. You know, actually, so much of this is it. This wasn't just giving giving a brief to a, an architect. This was actually saying this is this is a proper collaboration. You know. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, you mentioned then that your your dad was uh, an architect, yeah. and I believe your mum she had a cookery school. Did she? So did it always feel that your destination was into hospitality, or at one point could um, you have I mean, gone she, the she, No, she, so she, had a, she was a cookery teacher. Cookery so teacher. She was a cookery okay. teacher at school, and then she had a she had her own catering company. Uh, sort of after that, so I suppose we were always very. We have this sort of um, in joke in our family, in that. You know, the conversation at lunchtime is, is, is uh, sorry, at breakfast time is lunch and the conversation at lunchtime is, is you know, what's for dinner? And, yeah. and um, I don't think my parents have ever skipped a meal in their lives. And so I think, you know, it, we, we do, you know, food food and hospitality has always been, you know, my, 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 in, in, in their day, my, my parents were always very hospitable with their parties and things. So I, I guess I, it's always had that in our blood, blood. And, you know, we always, I'd say from a very young age, we always sort of were given a, a sort of tray of, uh, of sort of, uh, Canopy is probably sounds too grand, but it was probably in that day it was sort of a tray of a mushroom volivons or something to pass around a, a group of their friends. So, so I think we've always had hospitality in our hearts. I almost did, they wanted me to do landscape architecture. And I have I love gardens, which is again one of the things yeah. having a 130 acre estate. My my, 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 HR, my well, my, you know the the one, the one person here. Although you know I, I very much try you know I, I try to allow um, our general manager here to to obviously I, I let him have his. He, he, you know, it is his hotel now, but 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 Darren, our estate manager, who is 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 he's he's our he's our you know probably it's just amazing and 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 you know I, any of your listeners follow him on social media because he he's he's so interesting, uh, but yeah, Darren Venables and he 
Um, so I, I spend a lot of time with him and, and, and I'll, I'll maybe have an idea and he, he brings it to life. So, so yeah, I, I do. I love gardens and they wanted me to be a landscape architect, um, not a landscape gardener, but a landscape architect. And I almost did that. I applied and I didn't really, but I think because I had always had a part-time job at school, I didn't really put the effort into my exams. So, you know, I didn't do badly, but I didn't maybe work as hard as I, I could have. So I didn't quite get the grade for landscape architecture. So I ended up studying hotel management instead but as I say that was that wasn't necessarily second choice and you know and I think for years again probably going back to your point about in, the, the, the hospitality being hard I mean I, re, I, re, I remember I, I, there was definitely a period of time where I'm thinking you know this is a lot of work and 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 you know I think in that day we were really we were properly we were properly poorly paid in the early stages you know relative to um sort of other people that we studied with um but as I say, that has changed, and 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 and, and I think um, you know I, th I think I think actually um, I think particularly our managers in our industry, we, I think we I think we pay them very well now, you know, mm. and I think and that's across the board. And and you alluded to this at the start of the conversation about the fact that you're not a panicker and you're very calm. And I think one of the key things you get from this industry, um, hotels and restaurants, both of them, but uh, yeah, something goes wrong, something happens all of the time. So many moving parts, isn't there? Lots of people, lots of hot things, lots of lots of rooms. Uh, and I always say, look, something's going to go wrong every day. So the earlier in the day that something goes wrong for me, it always used to be exciting. I was like, yeah. look, it's only half a state and three things have gone wrong. That's good. I'll get those done and then I can crack on with my day. But yeah, I've, I've been in hospitality for 20 odd years and never been bored as well. So it, it is an exciting industry for that um you mentioned the uh the grounds here just now and uh kitchen garden you've got one of those i saw as i drove yeah. in is that something you do much of i know the pig have got a great reputation for sort of growing their own food um has that always been here is that a new thing and, and do you grow a lot to eat yeah we do and and it's something I, I you know i wish we had the space to do it everywhere to be honest with you and that's why you know i, I guess um you know i love all the hotels but i'm i'm, I'm particularly fond of tutin because again we, we've got all this land to do good stuff with so we actually created the kitchen garden we didn't have one up until when we we did the when we built the tree houses and again that was an opportunity while we were doing it, um, as it, with all these projects, it, it grew arms and legs, and and I suppose we 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 rolled it into the whole project because I think you know going back to this idea that everything needs an ROI, it's very hard to really demonstrate an ROI on a kitchen garden. Um, but we go, but again, going back to Darren, he's great because you know as I say, everything everything that gets grown there. I mean, he basically he only he only plants things that our chefs want, so it's it's a very easy relationship. And and now that the kitchen have kind of got used to the fact that you know, some of the stuff arrives with mud on it and, and not everything's perfectly shipped. I mean, that's, a, you know, the one thing about buying, you know, I, th I think, um, you know, we, we get a lot of our produce from Runji's, which is, you know, the, 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 the market in, in France um, in, in terms of produce. And, you know, obviously more and more we buy locally too, but, you know, a lot of the stuff still comes internationally, I think. Yeah, again, especially this time of year. Well, yeah, absolutely. And I think this is where there are some myths around in terms of what, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you know, I guess in a luxury hotel, they want to see, you know, luxury fruit and exotic fruit on 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 their breakfast buffets and things like that and you know and we're not going to get that in the new forest i mean um yeah that said we can now get strawberries for probably nine months of the year from actually from it grown in the new forest but um but yeah so the, 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 there is a there is a mix and and but but as i say darren grows everything and and uh and you know we extended that further when we built the cookery school in the kitchen because they've got their own kitchen garden and this lovely uh alitex greenhouse up there as well and and, um, and and then that's nice there because actually we've, if you're attending the cookery school, the guests can actually go and pick, you know, herbs from the garden themselves and, you know, and, and some of the ingredients will come from, from the greenhouse itself. So it's a very important part of what we do. You know, we actually probably took it a step further because we, we, we licensed the area so we can have parties in there and... Um, and and uh, you know actually one of the one of the best parties we do there is for, for children in need you know with Chris mm. Evans and yeah, was and, uh, and you know we we do all these uh, we we do all this sort of uh, street food and have chefs like you know Tom Kerridge and and Dr. Ethel Kocher and and uh, and uh, uh, Jose Pizarres who come regularly and and will do as I say street food in the in our kitchen garden for all these people that have, have donated millions of pounds to children in need. And obviously, you know, we've got Chris Evans there and, and you know, bands. Yeah. You know. So um, this all felt like it was sort of part of your uh, changing reputation, reputation. And I guess, as you alluded to earlier, not not sort of a revolution, but more of an evolution of, of what the kind of hotel had stood for before. Um, 
and, and it's been very successful because you've, you've changed your reputation. How did the, the thing with children in need come about? Because it really did seem to help position you. You were saying you were about opening up yeah. to families. It seemed like the perfect fit, but it was quite a risk, I think. When Was it Chris that got in touch directly? Because it was, yeah, it was well, a Chris, great thing to say yes yeah, to. Yeah, well, Chris, 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 Chris was, a, and again, you know, I mean, for me, my, my, whole, my whole world, my whole life is built around fate. And, and as I say, I'm a huge believer in fate. And unfortunately, sometimes when really horrible things go wrong, you kind of think, well, that had to happen for a reason. Not sure why, but maybe there was something worse around the corner. I don't no, but so actually, so so I, I guess sort of, I, 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 and um, so basically, Chris Chris was a, a guest of ours and, and quite a regular. He actually was a guest of ours because of James Martin, um, and as he's told fairly regularly, or James told fairly regularly, actually, um, Chris Chris and his wife Natasha, when they were when they were getting married, uh, they were due to go on honeymoon, and, and Chris had lost his passport. <laughs> So they were due to go. Sounds like Chris. They were, yeah, they were go to, due to go somewhere far more exotic, and yeah. and they couldn't. And and actually, it was James who said, "Look, you you need to go to Cheetham Glen because actually they'll really look after you." And I know the guys there because James Martin used to work here when he was, you know, when he before anyone knew who he was. Um, so anyway, so that's how Chris became a guest here. So he, he became quite regular, and I didn't. I mean, I'm being honest. I didn't really know. Obviously, knew him to say hello to. But anyway, one day he said, look, could, could we have a meeting? And I'll never forget it. We met in one of the lounges here. Um, he was in his, um, I suppose, pajamas, lounge trousers, um, as, as is his wont. You know, he will, he'll wander around the hotel like, like, he, like he not owns the place, but like he's at home. He's like he's relaxed. Yeah. Um, and so we met. And so he was in his lounge trousers. I was in a suit. And he said, look, and, and in those days, he was, he was obviously still on BBC Two. He was on Radio 2. He was doing the drive time show then. So it's even before the breakfast show. So that's how long ago it was. It was sort of, uh, I guess, about pre-11 or 12 years ago now. And he said, look, I've got this idea. I want to do... And he, the year before, he just started doing what he called the Dine and Disco, which was basically his pub, which is the Mulberry in Chiddingfold, which he doesn't own now, but he did own then. And he did this event where it basically was... Um, it was a band in the garden, in a teepee, and um, he, they, they sort of auctioned off the, the, his car, basically his cars. Yeah. And, and um, anyway, he said, look, I want to extend it further. I want to do, I want to go from the pub and I want to drive somewhere. Basically, they were saying, look, can you give us um, all of these rooms for free? Um, and, and in return, um, obviously, you know, children needs an amazing cause, but at the end of the day, you know, we are, we are a business and, and, and he said, look, there's a faint chance we could maybe do the, uh, the drive time show from the hotel, but there was no guarantee. So before that was, before there was any guarantee there would be a show from the hotel. And therefore I was thinking, well, how can, how can, we, how can we justify, rather than Absolutely. how we can profit, this, mm-hmm. how can we yeah. justify this? Other than the fact that it's charitable. Mm. And again, you know, I guess me being fairly entrepreneurial said, hey, let's try it. You know, yeah. and we shook hands and that was that. And anyway, lo and behold, we did, he did do the drive time show from here. We did that a couple of times and then he obviously went on to the breakfast show and then the whole thing sort of grew arms and legs. And then, and then when he sold his pub, that then morphed into actually doing the dining disco here. So instead of the sort of cars leaving from here, we actually brought the whole thing to here. So we had, so, you know, we've had, we've had take that here, we've had, um, ELO here, we've had Paloma Faith here, we've had Kylie Minogue here. And and to actually have, you know, if you imagine like almost like, you know, a mini Glastonbury for about 150, you know, very, you know, so 100 people paying who've paid. And, and over the years, I can't remember, I mean, it's, it's literally tens of millions of pounds that have been raised because of that. And, you know, yes, I mean, Chris would say, well, we couldn't have done it without you. Yeah, well, that's fine. But ultimately, he's the one who's leveraged it all. But actually to have that, Almost at an endorsement, and I think there's a there's something about Chris as a as a sort of individual who he you know I mean he's become a friend, but he he he's he is um, he he this, he just has such a I think his relaxed almost style on the radio is almost something that we kind of very much sort of sits harmoniously with what our style of service to a to a certain point. It's very much. Sort of, it, you know, it, it's 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 delivered on the hoof, as it were, in terms of in the same way. If you've ever, I mean, w- watching him do his show, and I've, I've been lucky to do that a number of times now, and it's incredible how the guy, you know, it, very. I mean, he has sort of themes for the day, but most of it's unscripted, and, mm. and or all of it's unscripted, and work how he can do that, and 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 that sort of almost having 
one conversation while he's thinking about other things and it's just incredible so. yeah yeah three three stages down no it is uh, it's a gift but it just shows the importance and again i think why i love this sector again you said earlier that you know that the, the sector kind of helps each other out i think there's lots of hoteliers lots of people i mentioned very rarely uh, if you need a bit of advice or you need some help you know can you not phone somebody else in the sector and ask them and it doesn't feel like i presume other sectors feel where it's all ruthlessly competitive it's sort of you know everybody's like yeah great you know i've had some experience in that i'll help you out and it's a very door open industry which i think it should be because fundamentally we're in hospitality and we look after people and it would be crazy yeah. if we didn't look after each other but, but it, it shows the importance of saying yes I think to stuff that comes up because I can see how much as you want to support children in need at the end of the day you wouldn't be writing them a check for you know 50 grand or whatever just off the cuff yeah. but you're providing an opportunity Absolutely. for something to happen but isn't it funny how fate plays its part and that yeah. became such a big thing and hearing about it locally I, I do think it was important in your in your repositioning yeah oh absolutely and 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 I think uh, yeah, it it, it um I mean, I think what you say about the the, ind and the industry is like a one big family, uh, and and you know, occasionally you get someone who comes along who doesn't fit into it, and, and 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 it doesn't work. But most most of the time, and I'll never forget. I mean, just going back to the award thing, probably, I suppose my my uh, when I when I became hotel of the year, that was. I remember doing my speech and actually I said in that that, that there, there, is, there can't be another industry where actually you get so much sort of support from other people and so mm -hmm. much and, and everyone, everyone would help you out. And even, even down to the fact that you actually, we, you know, obviously, you know, the staffing issue, situation is very competitive, but, you know, we'd always recommend some, you know, we'd always help someone find a job. We, you know, we'd much rather someone, instead of that coming to us saying, oh, by the way, here's my resignation, we'd much rather they came to us and said, look, I'm, I'm ready for a new challenge. Yeah. It's not something you've got here, or I want to try something new, or a new location, or wherever it may be. So we do, we do help. But yeah, no, I agree. But yeah, but but absolutely. But no, I mean, definitely. I think I think the endorsement from from Chris and then other people that have sort of followed um, very much helped us sort of re reposition where we are. Absolutely, yeah. and it helps enormously. Yeah. Uh, talking about that relationship uh, within the sector, uh, Relay, and, Relay and Chateau, your, uh, what's your role with them? You've, you've sort of worked with them for a number of years. Yeah, what I mean, are they and, and what gives you that motivation, I suppose, to work on stuff that's, that's much more industry-wide than specifically your role? Yeah, well, I suppose, so Relay, Relay, is, Relay I suppose, I, I, in terms of doing what it says on the tin, is a, is a marketing consortia. Um, and um, it started in the, I think, 19... 63 um roughly 63 and uh, basically it, it was it was set up in france and it was a it was a group of uh, a group of uh, uh, french hoteliers who were all on the same route um and they sort of called it the route de bonheur and, and it was this idea that they were they were trying to market themselves they were trying to do a, a joint brochure basically um and they said look actually if we do a joint brochure it shows on this road through the middle of france it would show all the main places that you could stop for an overnight or for lunch or whatever it may be. And that sort of then morphed into something bigger. And now Rally today is like 550 hotels um, and restaurants worldwide um, covering um, every, uh, uh, you know, well, um, yeah, so many, I think trying to think of the number, I think sort of, I think probably about 70 countries, I think altogether. Um, and um, it's, um, it's an incredible organization. I mean, what all the hotels have in common is they're all independent. Right. You know, they're all Amazing. relatively small. Actually, probably Tuting Glen at 72 rooms now is, is probably one of the largest ones. Right. Um, and three of three of our hotels are Rally and Chateau properties. So um, Tuting Glen, Clifton and 11 Cadogan Gardens are Rally and Chateau properties. And, and I suppose, so, so what, what they do for us, they do, they have a, a website, um, they have their book, which they publish every year. And, and for us, that book gets spread internationally. So that book, so if you stay in a, in a, a Rally and Chateau property in Japan, you'll find the Rally and Chateau book. And for us, what it does, it gives us an international exposure that we couldn't otherwise afford, if that makes sense. And it's, and it's, and it's also promoting it to like-minded travelers if that makes sense and that's the main thing right. so these are people so people so n n that, that that's the only really common link is they are they're all obviously of a standard mm -hmm. um and they're all very much focused on you know if, if it's food it's local food and produce and, and 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 if possible local staff and and so they're very much so you'll you'll go you know when you stay in a rally property you're going to have an in, a, a very authentic experience nice and 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 you know that the 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 owner or or, or the, even the man the manager they won't be they'll be there or they won't be far away if that makes sense it's not about as I say big corporations 
Um, it's not about hotels that are owned by by sort of other people, as it were, and not present. It's definitely not about hotel brands. So there's no mm. other brands in there. In fact, they have strict rules about you can't even be part of another association. Really? So 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 they've all got something in common, and you know you're going to go. So there is a so so the, 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 in terms of being able to trust them, you know that they've been you know obviously there's there's, there's there's quality standards there. They've been inspected. You know they meet certain criteria. So but but you know the experience is going to be very authentic, and I think that's the main thing. Why? I mean, I suppose I got asked, gosh, um, probably not long after I came back to Chewing Glen, um, so 2003. So probably about 2004, 2005, um, I got asked to be join the steering committee in the UK. So they, they, they each delegation has a has a steering committee. So there's a there's a sort of I guess a team of of, of people who sort of I guess look at more local sort of challenges as it were or opportunities. And um, and so I joined that, and then I got asked if I would uh, Jomé Tapias, who was the international president asked me um, if I would join the international board. Um, and that was an interesting time because actually in those days, um, obviously Rally is a French organization. I, you know, I have, I have pretty, pretty rusty schoolboy French um, and I got asked, and in those days, all of the board meetings were in French <laughs> and it was very, the culture was very, very different. It didn't feel very international, to be honest with you. And I remember that first meeting, I'll never forget it. It was, it was, it was, I just think, what have I done? What have I done? And, and, uh, you know, obviously there are translators, but, but not, not all the time. So, you know, even if you're, you know, and, and, and I say, so it's changed a lot, but as I say, so I did, um, I did one term. The terms are four years, so I did. It's a, a, a um, um, uh, you do you do a term with each president, as it were. So I did four years with the first president, and then it uh, moved on to Philippe Gombert, who is the, the current president, and and I did four more years with him. Um, and then when it came to his renewal, um, I got asked again if I would sit again with him. And at that point, just then, because originally when I joined, um, I, I only had. You know, well, I think probably by the time I joined the board, I had Clifton and Tewton. So it was manageable from a time perspective. Um, but then obviously when it came to this time round, which was just just about over 18 months ago, I was like, I, I just can't devote the time. And although in theory it's on paper, it's four meetings a year, four board meetings, but they're always international meetings. So they can be, you know, in, in far flung places. You know, one of the last ones was in India. Uh, which is lovely to travel to, and actually, a, a great, great experience for mm. me. And, and so, very, so very useful. You know, it was never, it was never wasted time. But, but again, I think, I think you just have to look at like, where does you know, a who pays me my wages, and 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 actually, just really in terms of actually at this point in time, there's so many moving parts in our business, so many plates to spin that I just can't, I can't afford to have that distraction. So. Um, but it was a, when I did it, it was amazing. I loved it. Yeah, but just being exposed to working. If you imagine you're sitting on a board with um, other very, you know, and, 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 and probably sometimes I questioned even why I was worthy to be there because I didn't think I was. But, you know, you've got great hoteliers and hotel owners from around literally all over the world sitting there. And I was, you know, I, I suppose I, I was very, uh, I, I, I guess one of my claims to fame was actually, uh, because I was, I was the only person who wasn't an owner on the board, and therefore my view was very different. And because obviously, as an owner, you don't need to really, you know, other than probably occasionally your investors, if you have any, you have to sort of possibly sort of justify things to them. But as a, as a, you know, as an employee or a, I'm a you know director, but as an employee, you have to justify to ownership why it's right to be part of an organisation like Rally and Chateau and where the value is, where, where's the return on investment. So. I think I brought a lot to the board because I was able to put a very different spin on it, and and actually, and also I, I, because I'm I'm quite probably as you go I'm quite outspoken. I, I I'm not I'm, I'm you know I'm never I'm never scared to say what's on my mind and what I think, and and therefore I would challenge a lot of things that maybe hadn't been challenged for a lot, even down to our board. You know, when we're having our board meetings, it used to involve a probably a sort of a good two hour lunch, typical French with wine. And, and I was like, look, I'm busy. I don't have time for this. I'm, I'm, you know, so by the time I'd left, the meetings were in English and, and which was in fairness to Finn, a common language. And we had a working lunch okay. delivered Excellent. to our meeting room. And that, and that was, you know, and so if nothing else, but, but there's a lot, you know, I say a lot of things, I, a, a lot of things I, I challenged because at the end of the day, it's an association and it's very easy as, as, from an association perspective to be, you know, you're, you're spending, you're really spending other people's money. 
and actually, so to have a situation where, I, you know, I, I was sort of quite brutal at times and, and would prod and poke them. And, 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 and so, and I know, I know, as I say, I'm not on the board anymore, but I do, I, I obviously know the people still on it. And I, I do know my name, my, my, my name gets referenced several times. Yeah, what, what would what Andrew say? say? Yeah, exactly. I can, so I can imagine. It's still my, you know, so I would, I would have, I genuinely would have loved to have done it. Um, I think it was probably right to, to, to sort of step down. And also you can do things for too long. Yeah, and I think definitely. probably some of the guys yeah. that are doing it maybe have been doing it too long yeah. and, you know. And so. I think it's incredible how these things, uh, you know, like you say you think, oh, that's fine, four meetings a year, but but subconsciously they sort of eat away and gnaw away and you end up giving them some of your sort of processing power, doesn't it? Yeah, as absolutely. You get, and as also you I think the other thing with that, with that is, it, it, you know, if, if you're, you know, if you're traveling to a meeting which is in India or something, you know, you're you're leaving, you know, you're leaving a couple of days, a day before, and then you're coming by the time you get back. So you you know, and then you know, actually for me, a big thing probably actually also was actually my family and the time that they're at because you know, again, I, I suppose uh, you know, I, I'm of the generation where you had a very different relationship with your parents, and 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 I, I never really had that sort of closeness. And now, you know, I I the my one of my favorite things in the whole week is being able to go and take drive my kids. You know, I don't, I don't care being a taxi because I love driving them there because those conversations you have in the car um, are, are, are great because it's, it's that one-on-one -on -one time. And then, and then you go and watch a, a sports match. And mm. I'm, I'm very lucky that both our kids are, are very sporty and, and, uh, and I love sport myself. And, and, and you know, I'm playing sport myself. It's one of my, my sort of therapies, as it were. But actually being able to run them around at the weekends uh, and, and do that and that and that's it and that probably you know I've, I've definitely gained at least four weekends a year where I can do that and that's you know that's that's a lot actually at this point in their lives where you know for you know I say our, our kids are, are, are sort of 16 and 14 so okay. it's not going to be long before but before yeah. they're, 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 they're going to be doing that on their own or, or not doing it at all yeah you're no longer relevant yeah, yeah no I walk my daughter to school who's 10 every uh, every Tuesday morning and uh, it's just my favorite morning of the week yeah, you know absolutely. it's a 20 minute half an hour walk yeah. to school and we have a good chat and uh, and I find out some fascinating stuff and uh, again, there's an irony, I think, isn't it, that we work in an industry which is about helping families spend time with each other and going on holiday or just going out for a meal, yet behind the scenes we're often all too busy because, you know, okay, I look at my poor chefs and they're working every Friday, Saturday night and Sunday lunch and you think, yeah, if you've got families, we'll work really hard to try and make sure that they spend some time with them because it would yeah. be crazy to be in this in this sector uh, and not do it. Um, drawing to a close, because speaking of which, you, you've spared me a lot of time, which yeah. is, which is uh, very much appreciated. Are there any particularly... Um, and, and, and I'm conscious that you've worked with so many people and seen, seen so much stuff, as you said, them sort of work in, in France. But are there any particular people that jump out from a sort of either a, a mentorship or an inspirational perspective that you've worked with, uh, either in our sector or not, um, that you particularly yeah, either, either you know, go to and, and have a chat or a conversation or think back to what you learned from them? Yeah, I think I've, I've taken it. Certainly for the people I've worked with, I think I've learned things from every, everyone I've worked with worked with and I, I suppose I've, I've never been I've, I've never sort of I, I know this isn't really about idolizing people but I've never I've never I've never really put people up on pedestals and that's one of the things I think which helps us enormously in the hotels is because we've never you know we never treat celebrities or or, or VIPs and you know obviously we we treat everyone like VIPs but we never we never you know I've never I've never felt in awe of anybody if that makes sense and that's just yes. the way I am you know and and, yeah, and, likewise. and 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 I think it's a good thing to be um they're, they're, they're human beings um, but I think, as I say, I've so I've taken, I've taken, I've hopefully my my leadership style is one which I've taken elements from people I've worked with. Um, you know, for example, Ken McCulloch. Uh, so I worked with, with him at One Devonshire Gardens, and then we did Malmaison together, um, and that was attention to detail and a, a, a level of attention to detail that I've never, I've never, been, and sort of instilled in in me, which is sort of uh, you know part of my sort of my DNA now in terms of of. of of you know the way a, 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 a room needs to be set, and especially a restaurant in quite a sort of theatrical way, and you know it's all about you know the lighting being right, the music being right, things like that. You know I think you know someone like Martin Scan, you know again it very much because you know I remember his his sort of his his was all about those relationships with people, and um, and and um, you know one of the one of the, the the you know he would if people wrote to thank him he'd write to thank them back for their thank you, if that makes sense. And he was nice. always, you know, he always had that, you know, in terms of the PR side as well, you know, he had that ongoing relationship all the time with journalists and, you know, he'd, you know, he'd even write to thank, he'd, he'd read an article about another hotel and he actually write to say, well, that was a really nice article, I really enjoyed it, you know, and things like that. Yeah. And, just, yeah, and he's just very, you know, I say, it was, it, there was always this sort of ulterior, ulterior motive, but it was very clever in a way and, and the way that he sort of continually invested and, and things like that. Um, 
other people, um, I mean, actually, you know, our, our current owners, you know, Ian Livingston, particularly, who's involved in the hotel so much. Again, I my, you know, again, he, you know, very, very, very clever, and obviously, I've learned a lot, a lot on the sort of commercial side. So, everyone I've worked with and continue to work with, I, I, I learn from, and 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 I and I and I, I allow myself to be challenged all the time as well. And and, and I'm always the one thing I always say, I'm, I'll never. I'll never apologize for, for changing my mind because I listen to people and, 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 I, and that's where one thing that people say, well, hang on, you said, I say, yeah, I don't care. Actually, I've changed what I think now. My, yeah. my mind has changed. But I think, I, think, I, I, I think probably within the industry that I've actually never really worked directly with, almost did at one point with Robin Hudson, for example. I think he's very, you know, I really like, uh, and obviously I've got affinity with him because of the New Forest because obviously he worked at Tuting Land previously. But uh, and then, and then probably the last one to mention is Peter Leder is someone that um, of sort of excellent eagles now. But he's some, he, he, he was he was always the if I and again I'm, I've always been very independent and it's never been I've never even you know I never even I, I never even asked my parents advice that was always my again just rightly or wrongly I've never been and I think I think as you get older you you value other people's opinions far more. So as you learn more, you realise that you need help more if that makes sense. So yes. so I do. You know, I will pick up the phone to people, you know, a million times more than I ever did, yeah. um, and 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 ask people's opinion, advice. But but probably Peter Leder was the one person that I I sort of did that, you know, pretty more regularly, and I'd often have a coffee with him, and I just I I, I appreciated his, you know, he's such a such a sort of considered person, if that makes sense, and 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 so I always I just always liked his sort of uh, his sort of again, you know, his style of 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 of, of uh, sort of mentoring, as it were, you know. Yeah. No, perfect. Yeah. Um, you also mentioned earlier, I picked up on the fact that in the chaos of uh, being in Scotland and that incredibly, uh, was it 15 years worth of hospitality in two and a half years, but you mentioned that you were actually running a marathon at the same time, uh, where clearly I think most people who had were absolutely buried in their careers and super busy probably wouldn't have squeezed in a marathon. Uh, and I know you do uh, cycle rides for charity, you're still running, uh, you look like a fit chap. Do you still do stuff to, to look after yourself? How do you manage that stress level? Because clearly you could be working 200 hours a week. How do you get that balance? Yeah, I think it, I mean, it's something I, bizarrely, as a, as a kid, I, I, I wasn't sporty at all, which people could just never realise. And, and, you know, I just, I just, didn't, I just didn't engage with it, no, nothing. Unfortunately, I, I suppose I'm a little bit sort of, yeah, I, I probably do sort of resent seems like a strong word but I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated that I'm, I feel like I missed out on something in my childhood and it was a lack of confidence I just didn't I didn't think I could you know I had this sort of picture in my head that I couldn't do things and I wasn't sporty and that was unfortunately that was that was sort of sort of that 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 mentality was 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 almost supported by school and and home if that makes sense and um, so, so, and it was, and really, I mean, for, the, for me, the, the big change was actually when I was at the Scotsman, probably, I remember we, we had a, we had a spa there and I, I started using the gym a bit to try and sort of just, you know, again, you, you know, it's very easy in our industry to, to, to sort of, to, to probably eat and drink a bit too much. And I started using the gym and, and I remember that one of the fitness instructors said, look, we're, we're, oh, it started, yeah, it started off with, he was doing, they were doing a triathlon in the gym for charity and he said do you want to do this and it was just you know it was a kind of set bit on rowing machine running machine that's sort of on the on the on the cycling on the on the on the bike and um so i did that and and and, and did okay and he said look you know they're 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 about to restart the edinburgh marathon you know you, you should you should do it and i was like and 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 and, and i made this sort of not fatal mistake but the, the one thing you do is you tell someone and then they say i'll sponsor you yeah so that that first ten pound note, and that was it. You can't. And for me, once I've said I'm going to do something, I, I do it. And because I had the sponsorship, there was no way of wriggling out of it. So so that yeah, say so that first ten pound, um, that that. And so I did Edinburgh. Um, I I did it uh, okay. I mean, I, you know, I I, I I I sort of got injured training and things like that. Again, it's a, a sort of another story. It's all right. But but that, but then that led me on to do London. So that was the first time I'd ever done. I'd never done a 5K, a 10K, a half marathon. I went straight into a marathon. Um, and then from then on, I'd say I've done London a couple of times. I've done lots of, you know, I regularly do, there's a New Forest half I do uh, almost every year. There's a, a, a wonderful, in Limington, just along the road from here, there's a, an RNLI 10K, which is probably the, the, the nice, most enjoyable, most beautiful run of, of the year, and, and, and that's just great. And then I've started doing these, 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 these big cycles as well. So for charity, for, so for everything from hospitality action and springboard and to the master inholders charitable trust you know we've done these these cycles which i i ended up organizing the last one and we oh, really? we cycled um 350 miles 
sort of cite you in the wrong way around from London up to uh, um, uh, over to to to, to um, uh, Rotterdam and down Hook of Holland and then down finishing up in Champagne, where we were uh, wonderfully uh, hosted by Tattinger. Um, and um, and that was with a, a bunch of guys from the Master Inholders, and and you know we raised a you know I think thirty or thousand pounds doing that, and um, and 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 it was great. So and I, I love so I love organising these things, and I love participating in them. And I, and for me, uh, you know, for me, running is a drug. For me, I, I absolutely I love it, and and uh, I now play hockey as well. I've got into team sport, which I never thought I would. Which um, and and um, you know, so so I kind of. But for me. It, it, it keeps it, it, a. It gives you something to do, which is, you know you can't. You, you know you do. You do think. I purposely when I'm running, I, I never have music on. Um, I, I, I do think, so I might think about a speech I have to do, or or a, an introduction I've got to write, or a, a very ch- difficult conversation I have to have with someone. But it's amazing. And anything that's that anything that might be frustrating me, anything that might be worrying me. You do the run, and by the end of it, it's gone away, or you've solved the problem. And it's just, and it, as I say, and it's the one thing that I would love to, you know. Although I know not everyone's, um, but I, I, I suppose I'm a good case in point. I wasn't sporty, and I'm probably fitter now than I've ever been in my my life. You know, again, it becomes, you know, it, it becomes a challenge at times. You, you know, get injured or whatever it may be, and it's, again, finding time, especially this time of year. But I, I just, I do, I genuinely, even if I'm not looking forward to it, I love it when I'm out there, and that the that how it makes you feel this sort of endorphins and and i just i i i genuinely would urge anyone and it, again it's it's sort of it, it's, it's well documented there's lots of people talk about this but it genuinely it, it does it takes the stress levels down yeah. and it's such a powerful thing to do for people and i just i wish you know and if i said away you know it's hard in our industry to sort of almost bring it to bring the whole situation to work i mean obviously leading by example is a good thing to do but when you've got a situation where you know you've got your your, your waiting staff who are probably doing their 30 30 000 steps a day already um but then you've got other people that send in and you but when you're operating 24 7 it's it's very hard to say right we're all going to do a an exercise class at lunchtime or something because that lunchtime probably never happens but i'd love to bring it more to work and i'd love to bring you know i, I see i, I see I, you know, I would love to do something with, you know, it frustrates me when, you know, you hear about schools where they're, they're doing less PE than ever before. And, but then you've got pockets of best practice where, you know, they're, they're, all the kids are doing a 5K before they start their day. And it's just, and it's, you know, it's just, it, it, it's, it's the, the benefits, the health benefits of, of doing exercise are just immense. And I say, I wish... I'd love to do more with that, if that makes sense. Mm, I'd love to do it, more of that it, thought. It, and I say, I, and I say, I try and I witter on about it all the time, and I and I and I and I definitely lead by example. But I wish, I wish I could, you know, people that don't think they can. I wish I could sort of do more to to help them because there's a lot of people that don't, if that makes sense. And I say, it's just for me, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a you know, it's a stress thing or a stress reliever. As mm. it were. No, no, it makes a huge amount of sense. Yeah, not a not a dissimilar journey. I was the yeah. same at school. Uh, I kind of think uh, I thought you had a natural gift for sport, or you didn't, and I didn't. I didn't really appreciate you could learn sport. Yeah. I just thought you know you had it. Uh, and same, yeah. I, I see my old PE teacher. Funny enough, because he comes into one of my restaurants, and uh, I'm much fitter now than I was. Mm. I'm the same as you. I, I'm just getting into the running. Started a few months ago, um, but cycling. You know, lots yeah. of lots of really long distance. You know, hundred mile cycle trips. Uh, and there's something meditative. I think about you know when you've got to climb a mountain in the Alps on a bike for a few hours, and uh, all you can focus on is pedal and breathe. And uh, yeah, it's great thinking time. But I think as a sector, we're constantly surrounded by cocktails and booze and food and temptation. Uh, and it is, you know, it does seem to be a, a difficult sector. I look at some of my bar staff sometimes, who, and the chefs, whose natural release at, you know, eleven or twelve o'clock yeah. at night when they finish shift, and understandably they can't go home and go to bed because they're buzzing from yeah. a busy service, and it ends up, yeah, a few beers, late mornings, and uh, yeah, I, it feels like there's something we should do in our sector, but also for kids and and food in general, I guess, you yeah. know, about eating better, but eating less, and being conscious on quality of food. We could probably do another hour yeah, on that, Andrew, yeah, no, definitely, but, um, but we don't have the time. Um, a lot of people who listen to this podcast, and it's not just aimed at, at people in the sector, it's aimed at people um, generally interested in, in food and drink. But where I generally speak to the independents, I think there's a lot of people, you know, hospitality bars, restaurants, in, in many ways they're in vogue and lots of people want to go and work in them because it's it's got a reputation as an interesting place to work. Phenomenally high failure rate. Um, I was interviewed Mark Hicks not long ago, who's uh, who said it's probably the hardest he's known it as a time to open a restaurant. In fact, his advice at the moment was don't open restaurants. Is there either a really good bit of advice that you sort of remember and cling on to over the years, uh, or a really 
bad bit of advice or ideally even both that, that you remember that you would give to people who were thinking of coming into this sector at whatever level? I, th- I think it's probably something I've learned in recent times and this and, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm sort of danger of contradicting myself and I think it's finding that balance of of as I said before being an entrepreneur and almost having the belief in a project and, and just almost testing that project in your, your head and, and thinking so much about it that you just whatever you're going to bring to the table will be successful but then balancing that with you know I think what I've learned from our, our current owners is just to t- completely strip the emotional side out of it if that makes sense and just you know look at the the worst case scenario in in, in terms of numbers and 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 that as a it's very it's it, it, you know it, it, it is like a bucket of cold water um, but um, but but it but it, it 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 does it does work if that makes sense and I think it's finding, you know, it's find it's finding that balance. Sometimes it does, it does have to be a leap of faith, and if you often you get someone who's passionate, but equally, you know, I, I'm sure probably a lot of most of the failures, the people were suitably passionate, if that makes sense. And 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 um, I think the other thing actually I learned is actually again from my time in Edinburgh and and, and, and sort of travelling over is actually just because something works in one area doesn't mean it's going to work everywhere, if that makes sense. And I think that's probably the downfall of the the the, the restaurant mm-hmm. industry, particularly at the moment where they've had you know they've they've had a, a brilliant formula and they've sort of the, 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 the rolled it out. And I think, I think in a way, I, I don't think it's the, I think I, in a way, it's, I think it's the investors who are probably to blame in some respects because these big rollouts, if that makes sense, and they're just moving too fast. And I think the trouble is, unfortunately, pace of our industry or, or industry full stop is such that, you know, if someone comes up to me and you, you want to conquer every, you know, every, every, you know, sort of major city or something with an idea before someone else copies it and does the same there. And that's the... And that, so it is, it is a difficult one, but I think probably the advice would be almost to, to balance that, that sort of passion and that entrepreneurial and that great, you know, genius idea, but then with a, with a big bucket of cold water, just to, because as I say, that's the bit where, as I say, I'm, I'm learning more and more. And, you know, I mean, I say I haven't done my own thing yet, but, but, but certainly, you know, when you're, you are working with someone else's money, you have to, you know, treat it as your own. And I think that's one of the things I've always done <clears throat> is, 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 is do so. But I think, um, yeah, I think it's that big bucket of cold water, which mm. it sounds really dull. No, and it's, boring, a, good, it's I, a good description. But I think, I think but you're I, right. But, yeah, but, just I, but a... I think it, I think it has to be, and you've got yeah. to sort of picture, you know, base it. You know, it's what are we now? We're at end of January, and yeah. um, it's yeah, bleak outside, and you know, who's going to be, who's going to be, who's going to be, who's going to be your customer, your guest on the, on that day? And I think that's you know. And, yeah. So um, on a on a wet Tuesday yeah. afternoon, I can't end on a cold bucket of water. Yeah. So final question. <laughs> um, you know, you're clearly busy. You clearly still love the industry and what you do. What is it when you wake up in the morning? What what gives you the greatest reward? Why is it that you still bounce out of bed and love what you do so much? I think it's that sense of achievement. You know, I think if I look at where you know, and, and sometimes, I, sometimes I do question sitting in the same. I mean, I, my, my 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 desk and chair um, have been in the same place since 2003. So what's that? Uh, quick calculation. Yeah, six, yeah. 16, yeah. 17 years. 17 yeah. years. So, yeah, so, so a long time. However, my roles evolved a heck of a lot over that time, and 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 our turnover has, and our, our success has changed. And so, for me, it's the it's 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 I, th- I suppose it's the success, but it's also the the probably influence. And I think it's it's not just the success of our own business, but again, it's if you have. You know what? What we then choose to use it. So be it a charity like a cycle, and then managing to persuade, you know, other people to join you, or doing going into a local school or college and talking to them and bringing some people into the industry. Or I think it's that it's that sort of almost that 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 list of of, of plates that you spin all day and sort of knowing and that raw. And I think I've you know I've I've, I've got much better at almost making sure right every day starts with a list and. And it sort of ends with a like ticking things off and making a new list, which is often longer for the next day. And I think that that sort of it keeps you sane along with the running, but also it, it keeps you sort of very motivated. So you're starting every knowing that you've got another mountain climb, and knowing, as you suggested, that you know you come in in the morning and you get these um, you know problems will happen that you weren't expecting, and that's and that's probably the most enjoyable thing about us, our industry is the fact that every day is so unpredictable, and even if you plot out every minute, and the, the secret is not to it's it's building in those buffers of of crisis fi- firefighting element and fact of, and also the fact that you know that you know your team will come and see you, phone you, WhatsApp you, whatever, and say you know we've got this to deal with. What do, what, what do I do? What would you think? And, and and actually the fact that you you've got enough sort of 
experiences in your 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 you know your, your your toolbox to actually hopefully say well I haven't dealt with that exactly before but this is what I would do and and mm-hmm. and that that again and you know you're you're coaching and and bringing people on so again that sort of that that whole leadership piece but yeah, uh, yeah no I agree yeah and ending up what you know and not what you do yeah. uh, well look congratulations fascinating it's it's really good to finally come and hear your story as I say your name's been mentioned numerous times and it, it's good to come and uh, finally meet you uh, I, I love certainly the Tute and Glen. I need to come and see yeah. the other venues. For people who want to uh, either to come and visit and learn more or maybe follow you personally, any particular social media channels or what's the best website to go to? Uh, well, I mean, certainly if you if you go to iconicluxuryhotels.com, then then you find all the hotels and depending on when this, you know, when people listen to this, then if we've got more hotels by then, which there's every chance we will, then you'll find whatever they are. So as I say, you'll find all the hotels on there. Um, I must admit, I I, um, I used to be very good on social media myself, but I, I I I'm unashamedly sort of rubbish at the moment, just because again it's a time thing, and 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 also it's a it's again it's that um, um, sort of that sort of twenty four seven thing, and 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 actually trying to trying to switch off a bit more, and and so I I, I, I dabble in social media, but but certainly you know that we've got as I mentioned Darren Venables earlier, and, and we've got we've got some great personalities who are doing much better social media than me. Yeah, and um, and uh, and so 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 yeah, so I'm 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 pretty dull to, to follow on social media <laughs> these days, but but have a look at have a look at the websites and see okay. the hotels, and and um, yeah, we, we we'd um, we'd love to welcome anybody who's uh, listening to, to come and come and stay or or come and work for us yeah, yeah amazing okay great well i'll um i'll put some links as well humansofhospitality.co.uk is the website for the podcast we will link to your hotel and i'll even dig out your social media in case you one day become active uh, again andrew but for now yeah thank you for all that you've done for the industry and um good luck and i look forward to keeping in touch brilliant thank you Thank you so much for listening to this week's podcast. And remember that on the website, humansofhospitality.co.uk, every week we put on some show notes and some links through to the various websites or social media that are mentioned. And we also do a nice little breakdown of that week's conversations into specific topics. So you can jump through the podcast and just listen to some of the highlights if you wish. If you've not done so already, if you could leave us a review on iTunes or one of the other podcast players, of your choice that would be hugely appreciated thank you so much and uh, we'll be out with another episode next monday